Okay. All right. <coughs> Good evening. Welcome to Finance Committee. Um, I'm Alderman Moore. I'm joined by Alderman Stoyer and Alderman Sladek. Alderman Dwayne is on vacation. So, uh, item number two on our agenda is the approval. I would uh, make a motion to move number five <coughs> up to right after the approval of the agenda. Okay. Second. We've got a motion and a second to re to move the report of the purchasing manager um, up to our first first actionable item tonight. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and then opposed. So here we are, item number five, report of the purchasing manager. Um, well, it scares me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take these, uh, I'll just take these one at a time. Uh, consideration of possible action on a request for approval to purchase 15 portal radios from <laughs> yes, who? <laughs> <laughs> Motorola Solutions Baycom for $71,640. Um, these are uh, replacement radios for the fire department. They're replacing old radios that are 8 to 12 years old, Randy. Yes. Um, on frontline vehicles, all eight stations are involved. Um, uh, and it's just replacement, uh, equipment replacement. We're buying them off the uh, WCA contract. Uh, Baycom has been giving us and continues to give us a 500 discount on each radio, $500 discount over and above what the WCA contract price is. All right. Yeah. Tom, you I'm going to wait on you. <laughs> well, welcome back, Rick. Thank you. <laughs> um, I guess I've heard all the reasons that this has to be done from one source. What would it take to put together a, a plan, even though it might be a long-term plan, to get us in a position where on radio equipment for both police and fire, we don't have ourselves at the mercy of a single vendor? The issue right now is the safety factor that we've discussed in the past. It's not as much about the Brown County banding uh, as it is about the fact that Motorola offers that officer down uh, safety feature that the other radios that have been approved for Brown County do not have. So it's kind of a, a locator. So if the other radio companies started offering that feature, you would support competitive bidding? I'm not, you know, I'm not the decision maker there. That would be the I'm departments because they have to use the equipment. I'm just reacting to your answer. Yeah. And, and your, I answer, mean, I would your answer was there was one feature that ties us to more law. That was my, my opinion, um, that that has been a, a safety factor. Um, so I would rather have you hear that from the chiefs, um, Chief Littman and Chief Smith. But I know that that is a uh, fact that's been discussed at several meetings. Um, as a mitigating reason to stay with, with uh, Motorola. Okay. I'm not going to believe the point. I know this is going to pass. I am going to vote against it just again as my statement that I am really upset of how we got ourselves in a position where we have only one vendor for all our emergency radios. Okay. Thanks for I'll, I'll, Okay. I'll make an, a, a motion to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Please note the no. Um, letter B, item B, consideration of possible action on a request for approval to purchase a fire engine, triple combination pumper. 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 Pumper from Fire Safety USA for five seventy nine one hundred and twelve. dollars Move approval. Uh, can motion and approve? I will second. And second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, none. Item C, consideration of possible action on a request for approval to purchase legislative management system software and maintenance from Novu Solutions, Novu Solutions for $232,800. Motion to approve. Second for discussion. Yeah, motion discussion. and second for discussion. So, yes, Rick. Rick, what is this? This is uh, a little bit uh, over my head, so I have backup here today <laughs> to, to explain it. The legisl <laughs> legislative management system really uh, is, is software that manages our agendas, our meeting minutes, um, etc. So I would like to have the, the expert come up and take it from there. Now you do know that in this particular award, 
Uh, we did receive three, three proposals. Uh, we interviewed all three vendors. We're recommending the low cost vendor, but they also earn the most points. Easy. All right. All right. All right. As Rick said, it's an agenda management system. So basically, it's supposed to streamline efficiencies in the city. Um, and the cost is for 10 years, just so you know that too, um, for this and the next uh, mm -hmm. line item. Um, so it's supposed to streamline efficiencies. Uh, it gives uh, city personnel better search capabilities of previous agenda minutes and uh, agenda line items and things like that. This is a request by the uh, city clerk's office. So we formed a team of myself, the city clerk, uh, somebody for purchasing, uh, Shelby and Amanda Barber from DPW, just a bunch of people who create agendas in the city and do research after the fact in the minutes. So this software is, you know, used in many municipalities. Uh, is there any savings associated with it? Well, the return on investment would be time. Um, possibly your time in the future as we get more of this uh, more agendas and minutes taken in this software also the software is video streaming also so when you have an agenda item there's going to be a, me a meeting manager and she's going to have a laptop on her, on her desktop right now and she's going to she's going to like uh, uh, itemize a, a line item in the agenda and that's going to mark a, a, a section of the meeting video instead of searching for it online it's going to you're, you're going to click on the agenda item in your uh, in the in the minutes and it's going to snap right to that video online so there's going to be a little bit of change of process for you guys too you'll have a uh, something like, like this to vote on um, you could bring it home if you want it's all decided these are like we don't have this cost yet because we don't know what you guys want you can vote on your phone if you want it it's all um, web-based software so um, it's up to you. These are these are additionally. This cost isn't in it. Isn't in this proposal yet because we don't know what you want. But these are about two hundred fifty dollars. Just a hardened little tablet with a case. Uh, so you get twelve of those or twenty for all the other uh, meetings. So if we want to look at minutes <coughs> now from a meeting, say in two thousand twelve, what's the process for that? Because going on online and trying to search for old minutes is Not nearly impossible. Yeah, it is. Um, with this software also, we're able to take all our old minutes and put them in a better search format. Um, that takes a little that bit of uh, personnel to take all the word files and combine them into a single searchable PDF document. What occurs now a lot of times is we take uh, all our word documents, we print them out, and then we scan them on a copier. It's an unsearchable PDF document. So we have to change, you know, this will take care of that. Um, mm -hmm portion of searching old documents, but we can go back in history and they will upload all our old documents into it. They'll provide us a format to do that. So then that would be available on our website for anybody Definitely in the general yeah, public to yeah. go pull mm -hmm. old minutes and... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, that takes a long time to do. Well, that's why Ms. Hurley is here, right? We'd like to find an intern to but do. I, you know, but I understand. Something yeah. an intern can do. You know. But I mean, even if it just becomes mm -hmm. effective with the... Yeah. First mm -hmm. start of the equipment, right. at least three, four, five years down the road. There's going to be a return on your investment. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that was one of the things, Mike, that you know a lot of us have been looking at the efficiencies on the web. You know, and I think yeah. something like this would, if it, I'd be all for something like that. Yeah. This in the next product. Was any of this funding from the stadium tax excess? Yes. That was. Uh, we got one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars from the stadium excess excess tax, and I budgeted twenty-five thousand dollars. Got one hundred fifty thousand dollars. We got probably three years of this paid for if we go with it right now. There's some startup upfront costs. This is minimal startup book. This is about 5,500 5, of startup uh, upfront costs. Uh, the other products that we, they're about t five times that. So, okay. and different uh, hardware that we'd have to purchase that costs three or four times what one of these things costs. So what do you get for the 232? That's a 10 year? That's a 10 year cost. And this that includes maintenance, et cetera? Yeah, that's software maintenance, any kind of eternal upgrades for the next 10 years. Again, we don't have to enter a 10 year contract. You know, the owner of the company is like, well, if you don't like my product, just leave. You know, but all our information is stored off site online and they're gonna give us monthly SQL server database backups. So we will have everything here which is nice because you never know how you're going to get your data back from the cloud. Um, so. so after two or three years, we're just going to see this as a uh, budgetary item? 
The uh, after three years, yes. After three years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't have, yeah. But by three years, we should stop using the tandies, so we should be all right. <laughs> <laughs> Compass and mechanical pencils. <laughs> okay. That's all I have. Anybody else? All right. No, well done. Maybe my motion. Okay. Uh, the motion on the floor is to approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. <coughs> Thank you, Mike. Sure. Item D is consideration of possible action on request for approval to purchase content management system software and maintenance from CIDIC Plus for $162,045. Move approval. Motion to approve. I will second that. I'm going to second. Is there any discussion? Yes. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, the uh, the city's uh, uh, web page, I guess, and, and uh, we'll discuss that in a minute. Mike mentioned uh, the, the committee that, that uh, evaluated all. They spent 12 hours going through vendor demonstrations and countless hours with meetings, etc. So there was a lot of vetting that went on with the selection of this. So. Uh, Mike, I don't know if you or Shelby want to talk about content management, but uh, somebody better than me. Well, and I guess I did miss one person's name because he, it was a lot of time. Uh, it was uh, I missed Lisa Bergman's name, so and it was a lot of access time for these people to review all this. So. Could I just ask one question before we start? Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to remember this. Of course, Stadium Access was for the city webpage as well. Wasn't that award like three hundred thousand? I, um, I don't recall I, what that amount was. It got up to as high as 125, and the, I mean 150, oh, and then you knocked off one. Oh, and I was once you found out that I had budgeted some money for it, <laughs> it took me, <laughs> took me down a little bit. Too honest. So, all right. Okay, great. Thanks. All right, the content management system is basically uh, this is uh, we went with a, a company that houses thousands of uh, municipal websites, so they basically have a product that we can slide into. All we got to do is take our current web page and migrate it over to them. I'm saying that e sounds easier than what it is, but we have a lot of pages um, in our website, and they're kind of, sometimes they're a bit redundant or hard to find, uh, so we're gonna lighten the load and reduce up some of our web pages and bring it into this new system. So basically, it's gonna be increased navigability, um, better search functions, uh, um, uh, there's more civic engagement, polling tools, surveys, um, uh, just a better citizen website. Well, they part of that, if you query something, like you just have a question, you can put it in the box. So it'll well, th in fact, they have something called a frequently asked question module. So okay. basically, we're able to all everybody get together and okay. you know whatever whenever they get a frequently asked question, just put it on the web, which should be there already. You would think. But okay. So every helps. agenda item could be a referendum. <laughs> well, and, and just to let you know, these are two separate systems. So you might go to a different website for. Uh, agendas mm -hmm. in minutes to search than this one also. So they're good. But right there would be links, right? So you yeah, yeah, get back mm -hmm. and forth. Mm -hmm. But these two companies are, they did in their RFP proposal for the uh, the CMS, the, uh, the LMS software was inside this. They're trying to partner together and create one single search solution. That doesn't exist now for any software. Um, there's always two different products, but they are trying to write the technology and the code to uh, create one search function. That's why we, it's a kind of a major reason why we want these two companies also. Although Civic Plus probably has the most award-winning websites out in the country. Nothing else. No further discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. All right, thanks guys. Thanks, Mark. Thanks. This year's Mike. Mike. All right, um, so we've got item number four is consideration with possible action to approve the Colburn Pool concept number four. Joey, well, number three. Oh, I didn't do the minutes? I'm sorry. No, we should have done that. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. And number three, approval of the minutes of the Finance Committee from June so 13th. So Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. That wasn't at that meeting, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, item number four is consideration of possible action to approve Colburn Pool concept number four and to discuss funding options and timeline. So mm -hmm. we've got some information here. I don't know if we just want to. Uh, well, I can start, uh, you know, perfect. the reason why this was referred to my park committee and um, the way I move forward with it, it really is not, I wasn't determining whether or not we, the concept was the right amount or if we should be moving forward with the pool. I was really looking at just what are our funding options and then on what time would we, if we were to borrow, when would we borrow? Would we borrow like this fall yet or would we wait till 2018 bonding? So that's the direction I went. 
Um, and again, um, I think um, Chris Weary sent out, um, Alderman Weary sent out an email um, this afternoon, and I think maybe he's already talked to you about um, what's in his information, but he had said that um, he, I'm pleased to report that about $750,000 worth of pledges will come in for this pl plan option number four. Um, if you want to continue to, you want me to continue to read the email? Well, we have no, well, no, I mean, I, I think it's pretty self explanatory. I, I'm okay. just curious what the remaining bonding amount is going to need to, need to be because well, the math isn't all exactly in there, right? Okay, if you want, I can kind of go through it. That'd be great. Um, the option um, pool concept number four is five million four hundred seventy eight thousand or five point five million. We have already bonded three point five million back in 2016. That leaves right around two million one nine seven eight. Um, if he's looking at $750,000 worth of pledges, that leaves $1,002,000 um, left for bonding. So he has recommended either to go up for bonding of or borrowing of $1,250,000. Um, and then as you see, there's one other option. We could bring that down if, he, if there was any change to the contingency. So he's looking at either $1,000,000 or $1,250,000 um, additional bonding for this concept number four. Well, the director of Kramer probably could talk about that. You know, the contingency fund too. Is that something that we discussed yeah. the contingency fund with our consultant, who strongly suggested that we don't lower it. Okay. Um, the reason for not lowering it is that it's based on history of projects that we've done. If it was a brand new pool, he would be very happy with even a ten percent contingency pool and shelter. When we did the rush center, we were at 21%, and that just included the building. It did, it did not include the pool, because the pool is brand new. So it, as a result of that, he's in favor of not lowering that contingency. He feels that we need that level in order to complete the project. Question, I, I have no interest in going through what we went through in the last iteration of this. So you my too. question to you is, will the mayor support this? I don't know. I can't speak for the mayor. Can I anybody hear? Um, what's your question on this later? My question is, in order to move this forward, we'd have to bond for another $1,250,000. The last time we had bonding for Colburn Pool, the mayor vetoed it. You recall that very well. Will he support this one? Uh, what he supports is getting a pool that's within our three and a half to four million dollar price tag. So uh, that's at this not, point, I don't. That's not a that. yes. That is not a yes. That's correct. I don't. I don't think that he will support that. Well, Mr. Chairman, that in my view is a problem. <laughs> Well, since, since I'm a member of the Friends of Colburn, you know, you kind of see where I'm coming from. I mean, we've gone through this over the last number of years. It's been very painful. It's been a painful process. I, I've, and I've been to the meetings. We've all been to the meetings talking about the various options that were out there. And one of the options was no pool, so, which is not as acceptable. I'm, I'm uh, emboldened by the fact that $750,000 worth of pledges are coming back. I for mean, this I, option. For this option. Right. For this option. Yeah. Right, for the That's renovation. Very specifically for, yes. this option. And at the meetings, uh, it was overwhelming. Plan 4 was overwhelmingly voted on by the folks that went to these uh, events. Um, so I am I'm fully in favor of moving forward. And as far as the financing of that, we'll have to look at that. That's but what we're I, doing right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, as I'm, I'm supporting moving forward. As far as how we, we go about it, we'll, we'll discuss that, I guess. So, what are the funding options? General obligation bonding for 1.25 million. Correct. Um, I think. Well, I think there's two options. Um, if um, there, there seems to be a um, concern or a need to want to borrow it right away, get that money in-house, even though the money would be spent until sometime next year. So then I think we would go through the state trust fund loan 
and do a borrowing now. You can have the money within about within 45 days from application. So we can have that extra one million, whatever the number is, we could have it in by this fall. That way, it's in hand, it's ready. When they um, then they can move forward um, and you know move forward with the plan if and when approved. Um, I did talk to the director. Oh, oh, oh go okay. ahead. I did talk to the director. Um, Steve Grenier, because I know there was a little concern um, whether or not we can move forward without having all the money in hand and you know moving forward with the project. Because like, my concern is why not just wait till the 2018 bonding? Considering the money comes in by June of 18, we already have three and a half million. We have over three million dollars of bonding. They can start using that money. Um, just put it in as a normal bonding process on extra administrative work. You know, and and then we would um, maybe save on some fees. That's why I wouldn't want to do bonding this fall because we would incur uh, larger fees for going through um, general fund b uh, borrowing. Okay. Um, so again, if you want to do it this fall, I would recommend state trust fund loan. Um, the rates are slightly higher than long-term bonding, but we could take it out. State trust fund loans, you can at any point, you can do re repayments or you could, again, pay them off sooner and we can just then roll it into our next year's bonding. So I think that's why I, I asked about putting the word timing in here. If we need it now, state trust fund loan I think is the only one and then we consider whether or not we can roll it into next year's bonding to maybe get a lower rate. And at that point, bids would be in and at that point if the number needs to be higher or lower as we move forward, um, then the, the, the correct or the, uh, the needed number could be borrowed long term. Because this would allow us to do prepayments or if pledges come in even higher and he has an extra and we don't need to borrow 1.25 maybe it's just one so those are those are my recommendations I have numbers to back up how much it's going to be in interest and issuance costs but really the cons if you want to do it now state trust fund loans otherwise I would cons um, recommend waiting to bonding of 18 then you would have your um, if and when this moves forward you would have a, you know you would know what closer to what your final number is that is needed what is the rate for the state um, so the state, the current rate at this point <coughs> is 3% if it, we do a one to five year loan. Um, five to 10 year loan was three and a half, and then if I did a 20 year loan, it's 4%. Um, but again, I don't think we would do a state trust loan, fund loan that long. Mm -hmm. But if you compare 20 year bonding versus 20 year state trust fund loan, um, there's about a 1% difference if you were just going to stay with the state trust loan. Yes, Alderman Nenning. Uh, I just give you a little bit of information as chairman of the park committee because I don't know how many of you followed our, our discussions there. But, uh, you know, when we didn't have enough money and the, the veto wasn't overridden, uh, the intent was to go out with three other options and try to uh, find something that would meet the amount of funding that we had available. And, uh, and then Alderman Weary added the, the fourth one. Uh, of the first three options, the first one was to have a 50 meter pool but only four lanes. Uh, and uh, uh, for all three, all of the first three options, the prices were right around $4.1 million, the estimates from our consultant. Um, the second option was to build a smaller aquatic center and you'd still have zero entry and a few amenities, but not a whole lot of amenities. Uh, and the third one was to build a, to forget about a pool, and to build a, a, a building that could be used for year-round recreational programming. And I, uh, uh, I, I think I could say that our staff uh, kind of like that option because it would allow some year-round programming for the neighborhood, really for the whole city from, from that. Uh, when we went to uh, the public informational meeting and we asked people for their opinions and had people fill out forms you know, with their choices, uh, none of the first three options had a lot of support. Uh, the, uh, the, the Olympic-sized pool with four lanes uh, it was felt that that was not going to be adequate for uh, uh, competition, uh, competitive swimming meets with only four lanes, uh, and probably would, was, would not be adequate for, uh, for very much swim team practice because you only got four lanes. Uh, 
the, uh, the, competitive, the uh, second option with the smaller uh, um, aquatic center. Uh, I, I don't know, the neighborhood just didn't like it. They, uh, they felt that it didn't meet their, uh, their needs and, and desires. Uh, the third one, well, they wanted a pool, so building a building without a pool uh, was not there, not in it at all. Every one of those three options would have been more than the money that we had. Uh, you know, we had three and a half million, 4.1, so we would have had to come up with $600,000 uh, uh, at least for, uh, for any of those three options. Uh, I think I, our committee members felt that if you, if you give the neighbors and you know, residents that, that have been involved in this, if you give them something that they don't really want, then the attendance would probably drop. And you know, uh, that's been one of the factors all along is what, you know, how we're going to do with the operating costs as time goes along. Uh, Colburn has uh, required a pretty good subsidy every year to operate it. Uh, obviously, a larger pool requires more cost, but the theory is that you know, hopefully you can attract more swimmers that would pay the admission and, and, and so on. So, you know, basically, I think at our committee, people felt, you know, residents really didn't want any of the options one through three. So. Uh, to, to try to force one of those options on, on the residents really didn't make any sense. It would probably hurt us in the long run with attendance and revenue and operating costs and so on. So the only option that really made sense to look at was uh, option four, which was basically uh, uh, putting a liner in the current pool but doing some modifications where you would, you would make it a true 50 meter pool and you would take care of, you would have a, a, a deeper diving well uh, so that that would accommodate uh, those that want to, uh, want to use it. Um, and at, at committee, we didn't know how, how the private funding would go. Uh, uh, frankly, I was hoping that the whole million would come back in private uh, contributions as, as pledges, but we really didn't know. And all of them we really wanted to refer to the finance committee to talk about you know financing uh, options and to give you a report on, uh, on what uh, how much how many pledges they think they can get under Plan Four. Um, I agree completely with what Alderman Sladek said that uh, to proceed without knowing the mayor's position doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, it would, it, we'd have to spend money on the consultant to prepare <coughs> bid specs, and you know you never know how the bids are going to come in. But the consultant was fairly accurate with uh, the first round of bidding, so I, I, I would think if we uh, if we go ahead with that, but but I wouldn't even want to spend the money on the engineering uh, work uh, to prepare the bid specs unless we know what the mayor's position is on it. You know. We might end up back in the same situation that we were before. Um, and another thing in terms of the financing that I just want to point out is that I'm not sure, and maybe you know, Mark, uh, what the uh, uh, how the pledges work because in the initial round of pledging, uh, my understanding was that people were allowed to make their pledges over a three-year period. Mm -hmm. So if that's, if that's still the scenario here, we'd have to finance the whole thing, basically, or most right. of it uh, up front, and that may enter into the costs. Uh, I did not know that. Okay. So I Is that, that correct, Don? I think so. As far as we know. So those are things that I think you need to be aware of and take into consideration. OK. Like anything else, I suppose there was time sensitivity on this. You know, no, no time sensitivity. No, <laughs> it's just as time sensitive now as it was six that, years yeah, ago. Yeah, right. But I'm just saying, in terms of decisions are made as far as well, I, I mean, making a decision tonight and saying, okay, this is Brown State Trust. It. You're not going to have shovels in the ground this year anyway, right? I mean, this would be a 2018 project. Yeah. Yes. Um, if it was approved as part of like 2018 bonding. Would there be shoveled in the ground in 2018, or does that push it back to 2019? 
it really depends on whether or not you want to invest the money to hire the consultant now or whether or not you wait until you have all the money in hand. Okay. So if, if we invest the money now to hire the consultant, you're taking the chance of running into the same situation we just had where we paid a consultant to engineer it but we're not moving forward with the project. It's a tough one. I mean, I, I have my emotions and feelings on one side of, of this, but I do understand that it sounds like the mayor is not in support. Well, I think everybody probably has quite a bit of emotion on one side of it. I mean, yeah. Yeah. But, so I, get paid big I mean, I think the fact, yeah, the fact there's a 1.25 million <laughs> shortfall. You know, I mean, and two of the other options were going to also be over anyhow, so it wasn't a matter okay. of, you know, that there was going to be some. I guess in a, in a perfect world, it would be nice if somebody else would step forward, another donor in the city or community, and, and just say, look, we'll, 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 that's, that's a you know, scenario that would be great. But well, a lot of the funds that it came in weren't really donations. They were naming rights that were sold, and the new pool doesn't have... I mean, the new concept wouldn't have as much to name. You know, if it was more donations, not sold naming rights, <coughs> then maybe there would be a different, you know, opportunity as well as far as funding. But. Mm -hmm. So, do you feel we're limited that way at all? I don't know. Dan? Well, I, I mean, you know, ultimately it was the friends of Colburn Pool that did the fundraising. Mm -hmm. If they want to try to go out for more fundraising, that'd be up to them. What was the amount of state trust that we paid off with our stadium tax? It was 1.2, wasn't it? Um, yeah, 1, 2, 1, 3. Mm -hmm. Correct. To basically, basically be taking stadium tax money and reallocating it from high interest debt put it toward the pool. It's basically what we would just be doing in a matter of swamp. so many months. I, I don't like the idea of borrowing from the state trust. I just, I don't know. It's, it's, a, higher, it's a higher interest. It's a... Uh, I mean, borrowing now isn't going to get shovels in the ground in October anyway. So, I mean, as far as that recommendation at all, I'm weary here as far as using that those funds and making that decision tonight, I, I wouldn't support that. Um, you know, of course, it's an item that deserves more conversation at council, but I do think maybe we should send them a recommendation. <coughs> well. I'd be okay with that just to keep the thing moving. We could send, send the council a recommendation and have them deal with it at the next meeting. But I sure well, would like to hear from the mayor. And I think that'll be our opportunity to do that. So that we hold hold until we get the uh, state from the mayor on this. I mean, I because right now you look at the, the pool concept for then you got to discuss funding options and the timeline. So. Any of that would be moved unless we. Well, I think discussing this at council is going to be better off anyway. Otherwise, all anybody's doing is trying to count votes for the next, you know, week, which doesn't make any sense to do that because nobody knows where anybody's at and the discussion hasn't even been had on where the more support is. Well, then. Um, so I think, uh, you know, we could take a motion here to just refer this for a full council discussion. I would do um, that. I mean, it was sent here, but now at least we have the numbers. We know the exact amount that we're looking at. Um, we've talked about our funding options. Again, like I said, I, I, I'm i not supportive of state trust, but if that's the discussion they want to have a council, then that's fine. You know? The alders, will all the alders have these? I can get that to Yes. Yeah. But it sounds like the state trust is not necessary. Right. It looks like it would be a bonding. Right. Um, so I guess the motion that we should take is to um, send this to the council with a recommendation to discuss bonding options for or the remaining 1.25 million. Mm -hmm. I will make that motion. I think that's really what the issue is. Okay. So is that a second? Yes. Okay. So we've got a motion and a second on the floor. What we'll do is. Uh, 
We'll bring this to council with the recommendation that we look at bonding options, um, basically eliminating the state trust option. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. None. Okay, I'm sure that'll get a lot more discussion next week. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're on item six, which is update on negotiations for the room tax agreements. Um, I'm just gonna give you a high level overview. Um, I know that you know that um, I know that council has approved a document from the county. Um, yesterday we received some new documents from the um, from the county, and um, I think at one point we thought they were revised and knew that they included some of the city's recommendations or changes. And after review, there were very few of the changes were included. So I think that's why I know I think I heard people say, "Well, they weren't new documents that came out yesterday, but they really we thought they were because they were going to include more of the changes that city had re recommended." So some, we had new documents to review yesterday, and, and then this morning there was some lengthy conversation um, between um, basically most of the attorneys, including Ed Fabinan. Um, at that point, they got they made um, headways. They had a still, still a few technical um, issues to work through. There were a few open items. There was a non-compete discussion, whether or not they were going to try to see if they can find some common language. And then second, they had talked about KI maintenance which I don't think is really on the table anymore. So there was some discussion as of this morning on if there were going to be any substantial changes to the documents that the city council has already approved. Um, that's really the update. I know there was discussion at RDA on this item. Yeah, at RDA we looked at the uh, RDA's role um, in the uh, cooperating agreements for management of the KI Convention Center. And um, we are going to have a special meeting Friday morning at 7.30 a.m. So closest time we could get there to make sure that it makes the Tuesday council meeting. So, um, but we're going to, uh, the goal is to take action on whatever amendments are made. So um, some of it, again, is just technical language, moving commas, periods, dotting I's, things like that. Um, the more major discussion are a couple of the proposals that, that were brought forward, brought forward, one being a either capital improvements or maintenance fund. Um, which was discussed today and um, sent back to bring us documents that does not have that language. And then the other part was the non-compete, which I think deserves a little bit more competition as far as poaching and sniping you know, businesses from each other and then avoiding um, any kind of antitrust issues. So I think that that's, that's a fair conversation that we could still have language put in and, and talk to on, on Friday morning. But, uh, there's one municipality I think has taken action on this. Is it tomorrow or Monday? No, I, or? Thought, I thought I heard Monday was Swamaka. Monday. And then next so, week I think some additional actions are being taken. Yeah. So by the time the first municipality takes action on this, the RDA will have already seen this document and put it through. So um, that, then I assume every municipality will have that set of documents that they'll be looking at. So, so it's moving forward. It's just um, kind of getting it all figured out. Mr. Chairman, I'll, I move to receive and place on file the update on negotiations. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Done. All right. Item number seven is report by the finance director. Um, I have nothing at this time. Awesome. Nothing to do with that one. So, um, well, I guess we should receive and place it on file. So I move. Motion and second to receive and place those items on file. So. Uh, before we adjourn, I just want to note that uh, for both personnel and finance, we did have two additional alders, um, Alder Person Dorf and Alderman Manning here today. So, um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So we'll second. Motion second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Great. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.